And welcome back to Mountain West Basketball Media Days, powered by Air Force Reserve. We now head to Boise, Idaho, and the campus of Boise State University, and bring in the head coach of the Boise State Broncos, Leon Rice. Coach, thanks for making time for us. How are you today? I'm doing great, Jesse. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. It's great to see you. Once again, if you have a question for Coach Rice, you can go ahead and press the raise your hand button to enter the queue. You will be allowed one question and a follow-up question. If you don't have a follow-up question, go ahead and take your hand down. Coach, you're in your 11th season at Boise State. Last year, 20 and 12, you got uh, a couple of starters returning, including the preseason Mountain West Player of the Year. Let's first talk about what Derek Olson brings to your team. I know you're super happy that he decided to return to the Treasure Valley for another season? Well, we're, we were thrilled when, it, when he made that decision. And, you know, we, the thing about it is in, in that process, you know, I think uh, we just wanted, you know, you always want the best for the player and the kid. And um, I knew that he and his family would, would make a, a decision that's best for them in the long run. And, um, you know, Derek is a guy that knows he came here to get better. He's done a great job of that. And he knows in the next year that in the next six months or so, he can keep getting a lot better. And, you know, that's uh, that's why he came back. And and that's what I've seen in, in these months through summer and then the, the, the fall time that we've had him is have, I've seen a lot of growth since last year. And, that, and that's, you know, that's why he came back. And that's what we're encouraged about and excited about to, to get him on the court with this new team. We've got a number of questions for you here. Uh, we will start with the Casper Star Tribune and Davis Potter. Hey, Leon, can you hear me? Yep, I got you, Davis. Leon, uh, I know Wyoming hired a guy you're familiar with in Jeff Linder. Uh, I'm just curious what you think about him as a coach and, and what you expect to see from Wyoming just knowing his style of play. Well, yeah, Linder, you know, he was a big part of what we did here. And the, the moment I got this job at Boise, I, I, you know, I'd known Jeff for a long, long time and and always respected what he's done throughout his career, not just here at Boise, but prior to that. And and so when I got the job at Boise, he was one of my first calls to get him here. And, and he was huge in, in laying the groundwork for this, um, you know, for this program and for what I've been able to do here. And uh so, you know, I was really, really pleased with um, with the hire because I know how good a job he'll do. I'm also there in our league, so there's always that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the the Jeff and I, I like I said, I, I've always had a ton of respect for him as a coach, and, and we've been good friends for a long, long time. And so uh, I just think he'll do a tremendous job there in Wyoming. What, what do you expect from him in terms of their, their style of play, just know, coaching with him and knowing his style? Well, you know, he's very, very creative offensively and they're hard to guard. And and I think, you know, he inherited a, the guys that are kind of perfect for his style of play. And then he was able to, you know, add the right guys to the mix. So I, I think they're going to be a lot better than people think they're going to be and um, maybe a lot sooner than people think that, you know, uh, I think there's, there's maybe no doubt in people's mind that he's going to get them competitive right away. Thank you, Davis. Our next question from Mark Ziegler of the San Diego Union Tribune. Hey, Coach. Um, curious. Hey, um, you know, Dutch is kind of Dutch told me yesterday at, that you know the, the the preseason polls really don't mean anything until we see the schedule. And it, you know, you're second, they're first. Um, just what are your thoughts on the schedule? And and you know, you're going to play one of those between the two of you. You're going to play both games in one place. Um, how are you going to approach that? Well, I, I don't know yet because, you know, you don't know, I, I, you don't know where those are going to be. You don't know where those other games are going to be. And, and that's, you know, I've always said that about this league. One of the things that makes this league so unique is a, the travel might be some of the most difficult travel in the country, especially in winter. And, and you throw that in with the places that you have to play. And I know Dutch was really, really concerned about the, you know, going to play two games at altitude, and and you know, you talk about the places that we have to go, where where, where they're talking about Wyoming or Albuquerque or Colorado State or Air Force and, and those high altitude places. Not only are you playing really good coaches and really good teams, 
but you're dealing with a whole nother factor that people aren't used to dealing with. And, and so, yeah, Dutch was really, really concerned coming from sea level. And, you know, it is, it's hard to comment on it or, or even wrap your brain around it until a, you do it because this is something we've never done before uh, in any league that I've been in where you play the same team back to back, you know, you know, back to back games uh, on their court that we've never done that before. Plus, you know, we don't know how this travel is going to work and all those kind of things. So until we kind of live it and see it and do it, I, I don't, it's going to be hard to wrap our minds around it a little bit. And in terms of the poll, are, was there any disappointment on your end that knowing what, what you've got coming back and how talented you are that you, that you weren't first or, or maybe a little bit closer to first? No. Or are you no, happy I, that Dutch have that? Uh, yeah, the, 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 he can have that one. That's fine. Yeah. It, uh, uh, no, I don't. I mean, you know, the, the, way they, the way they were last year, that certainly, you know, you got you to, gotta, some of that respect has to carry over from the team that they had last year and what they were able to do. And, you know, I mean, that was, it, that's one of those heartbreaks that, that, you know, I didn't have to live that where, where you have that kind of team and we don't get an NCAA tournament. I mean, that, that, that was, you know, that's a sad thing for athletes and coaches and a team like that. And so, you know, they're deserving of having this, that respect carry over into this, you know, into this preseason poll. Cause really when you look at it, Mark, few and I were talking about this preseason polls, are really a lot to do with the respect of the program as a whole, not just that team, because there's so many unknowns of each team. There's, you know, I have a million unknowns on my team. And now granted they're, they're they've got good lineage and, and, you know, they, they looked the apart and those kind of things, but, but there's, they're, they're still unknowns. I mean, they haven't done it. The, the best indicator of, of success for the year usually is the amount of returners that you have. And, and the amount that they of what they've done uh, prior. So, you know, I, I think you try to base the preseason rankings on that, and then you, you and mixed in with some of the new guys. But I think the new guys are are question marks in, in every program, and and they have to be until they've done something. Thank you, Mark. Coach, your next question comes from your backyard, and BJ Rains of the Idaho Press Tribune. Good afternoon, Coach. Good afternoon, BJ. I'm curious. I know we've talked a lot about just trying to mesh all these newcomers and all these, you know, guys together. And that was a big challenge, obviously making it all fit. Uh, how, you know, I guess until you get into game action, you won't really know, but how, how is it going in terms of trying to make this group uh, all kind of learn to play together and fit the pieces together? Well, I, I think it's going great. And it starts with the leadership of our attorneys and, and, you know, starting with Derek Alston, he's, he's just does a, a great job of blending things together because he's so versatile and he can make, you know, you can put him with all kinds of different guys and, and he can make that lineup work in his own way. And that versatility, we're still working through a lot of different things of where, you know, where it's going to be suit us best uh, and suit the team best of what combinations. Because, you know, that, that's something that you sort through when you start getting exhibition games and see, and scrimmages and all those things you work through those kind of things then well we don't have that opportunity this year so we're going to have to learn some of that on the fly we're trying to learn it through practice but like i said there there's there's only a certain amount of that that you can kind of gather through practice because games change things a little bit and uh, so you know we're we're doing our best with that but uh, it's going to be a challenge and it's going to be a work in progress, no doubt about it, with, uh, through the preseason. And hopefully, you know, by league, we've get, we get all those combinations a little more polished because, you know, you look at our, the starting lineup in, in November probably will change a lot throughout the year. And, and especially in a year like this with, with the COVID things going on. And um, there, we're going to have to adjust to a lot of different things. And, and the versatility is probably going to help us with that. Is there of the four, you know, transfers, and I know you don't get Devin here till semester, but I mean, is there one thing that one of them brings that this team needed the most, or is there one thing that like one of the guys just going to provide something that you've really been missing? Well, I think all of them provide something in their own right. And, uh, uh, you know, you got each one of them, you know, you got Mladen provides the size, Eman provides a great physical presence and the versatility that, that goes right goes really well with DA. 
Uh, Shaver is has got this natural scoring ability that he can make tough shots and he can score in bunches, I think. And you know, and Dinaire, uh, he's you know an elite athlete at his position. That that another great scorer and a, and a really really good shooter. Uh, he's been injured a lot, so we haven't got to see him as much as as those other guys. But uh, uh, you know, each one of them does bring something special to the table, and and that and again that that goes back to being able to blend them all together. Because to, I have to still figure them out, and they're figuring out where they belong and and what what things they can bring. And and you know, we're we're getting some of the answers now, but we're going to keep getting those throughout the year, I think. Thank you, BJ. The stage now for the voice of the Broncos, Bob Beeler. Coach, how are you doing? Hey, Bob. Great. I remember a couple of years ago, uh, Chandler Hutchison did basically the same thing Derek did, and that is he tested the waters for the NBA yeah. and went around and talked to people and learned a lot. And I'm assuming Derek will be able to take advantage, maybe not quite as good because he couldn't visit in person as much yeah. as Chandler could. But where do you think he's going to take his greatest strides? Because I thought Chandler improved a lot from junior to senior. Where do you think Derek will improve the most from junior to senior? Well, I think you're just, first of all, you just see a natural maturation going from your junior year to your senior year. I th I do think there's a, it did help Chandler, you're right, going out and working out. And I, so I wish Derek could have got to do that because I think that really would have benefited him. But like I said, his family, you know, they got that basketball, they, they've been involved in basketball their whole lives. They, they have a high high basketball IQ and a high, you know, they get it, they understand. So I think they were able to pick up a lot of things just through what they were able to do. And, you know, I, I'm, the thing that I see with Derek maybe now more than there's more leadership from him, you know, he's comfortable being a leader in his own way. He's, um, guy, he's just got such a consistency about him now that, that, you know, day in and day out, he's been, you know, one day he's shooting the ball great. Next day he's passing the ball great. He does what the game tells him to do, and he's comfortable doing that. And and when you have a guy like that, and then guys around him that can help show that talent, I think that's what you're going to see is that, you know, some days he's going to end up with 10 assists. Next day he'll get 10 rebounds, and next day he'll score 30 points. I mean, it's going to be different, I think, with Derek every night. But it's not on him all you know, the weight of the program is not on his shoulders to go out and score 30 points every night. Well, if the game tells him to do something different, he's got that ability where he can go do that. And like I said, he can, you know, because Chandler saw all kinds of different defenses. Derek's going to see some of that too, no doubt about it. But if they want to go double team him, triple team him, well, then he, like I said, on that night, he might have 10 assists. So that his versatility has even grown with having uh, some, you know, some more guys that can do some things around him. And my second question would be, you've got a lot of new faces, guys who've been there to practice but haven't played games together. What do you think you're going to learn about your team in the first three or four games of the season? Yeah, that's the million-dollar question, Bob. There's always, there's always those surprises. There is. There's guys that, you know, that play better and do some things in games that you haven't seen them do in practice. And there's, there's both good and bad in, in that direction. And then there's always that game slippage. Playing, there's nothing – there's nothing like playing games and, and what you learn from your team and, and how you can give them the feedback and keep continuing to grow as a, as a group. So that, that, that's the million dollar question. I, we don't know yet what we're going to see. And uh, when you got this many new guys and this many guys that haven't played together uh, that, that are going to contribute major minutes. So I'm, I'm excited to watch them though. They're, and they're the boy, they are so excited to play somebody else. I mean, you know, we, we talked about that in practice yesterday. It, it's it's getting to that time where guys are getting antsy, and you know, our, all our biological clocks are saying it's time to go, and 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 we're we're excited to get that opportunity. Thank you, Bob, for the questions. Coach, we'll stay in Boise. Uh, Rachel Roberts of the Idaho Statesman with the next question. Excellent to see you, Coach Rice, although you can't see me. Uh, <laughs> you guys obviously are losing, uh, lost the Mountain West's all-time leader in three-pointers. You guys have a prowess, you know, long history of being good at the three. With the group that you have, do you see things changing from that at all this year, or who do you see kind of replacing Justinian's role? Well, you know, that is one of the areas that Derek's made a big jump, is consistency of shooting the ball. And, you know, he with his size, he can get a lot of – you know, a lot more shots off than the average guy, you know, because he can, 
even if he's guarded, he can still get him off because he's so big. And and that's, you know, I, I love having guards with size. And, you know, Justinian was a big guard, but Derek takes it to a whole nother level. But um, so, you know, I think Derek can really pick up some of that, uh, you know, some of that slack that we're losing with Justinian where night in, night out, you knew you had a three-point threat. You knew where his defender was going to be. And if his defender wasn't there, well, they were going to have a problem. And um, so, you know, that that that's the first guy that, that when I look at, I think, Marcus Shaver can deliver some of that three-point ability. Uh, you, when you look at all these guys, they all really can shoot. Uh, we'll see where the numbers end up and all that. We don't know yet, but um, I think we got a lot of guys that are good shooters. We'll see, you know, that, that's the million dollar question. Can they become excellent and great shooters? And um, I think, I think a lot of them, they put in the time doing it. So yeah, we're, we'll, we'll still, you know, we'll still have that similarity, but I do think we'll have that ability to get to the rim a little bit more than maybe some of the past teams. You guys uh, only returned about 30% of your rebounding production from last season. How much is Mladen expected to kind of pick up that role for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, that's one of the exciting things about Mladen is he's done it. You know, he's been a good rebounder in college already and yeah, he he's got that ability and that needs to be something that he keeps getting better at and, and become one of the best rebounders in the league that would that would really help this team and and you know i've seen that in practice and and like i said he's got a history of doing it at east tennessee state he's a big body he's he's durable he's physical and he does his job kind of every day that's that's what a great rebounder has to do and he checks all those boxes so i think i think that's a great place for our team to start as far as rebounding the ball is concerned but Hey, it's a group project for us. And, and, you know, if you don't rebound here, you don't play. So uh, we'll we'll become a good rebounding team. We might not be great at the start, but we will become one. Thank you, Rachel. Next question from Julie Jag of the Salt Lake City Tribune. Sorry. Hello. Technical difficulty there. Thanks coach for taking my um, question. Uh, Obviously interested in Utah State. They're going to look a lot different without Sam Merrill at the helm. Can you tell me what you're expecting from them? Well, you know, they still got that maybe one of the best front lines on the West Coast. I mean, they, you know, not they got size. They got guys that can go score the ball and great motors. And, I, I you know, that's that's – that part of the team coming back is really, really valuable. And so they're, they're going to be, a, you know, Craig does a great job. They're going to be a great team. And, you know, they'll be, they'll be one of the teams we're all, we got, I think in this league right now, we got a lot of teams that can contend for a title. And uh, I, I expect Utah State to be right there in that group. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Julie. Next question from the Albuquerque Journal's Jeff Grammer. Leon, how you doing? Hi, Jeff. How is it down in Albuquerque? It's crazy times here. And um, I, I want to ask you about kind of about that. Uh, I have two questions for you, and I'll ask with that the COVID question first. Now, do you um, get you guys, the two questions and a follow up, or what's the. Uh, what's I'll, 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 be, I'll be good. Just <laughs> two questions. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the COVID situation is, is hitting, obviously, New Mexico a little bit differently than it's hitting anybody else. There's only two out of 357 Division One teams that aren't allowed to practice based on local politicians, anyway, and, and health orders by the politicians. And UNM and NMSU. Who are, who are, are the two? Teams. Sorry to interrupt, but who are the two? UNM and NMSU, the, the two in oh. New Mexico because of the governor's oh. health order. There are Got other it. schools, obviously, that have pauses because of outbreaks or the Ivy League as a conference decided to. But as far as ho- local health orders, only UNM and NMSU right now aren't allowed to even practice. Could you imagine right now being two weeks out of the season and not yet being allowed to even practice or set a schedule? They don't have a non-conference schedule set yet. The the stuff that New Mexico is going through, but also this league as a whole, um, this COVID situation obviously is an uncertain time. Do you know yet like how to prepare your players and, and what would you do if you were in New Mexico right now, not even pra- being able to practice? Uh, yeah, first of all, that that's uh, Paul and I have had some conversations about it, and uh, uh, you know I understand how frustrating and how uh, that you know the mental health of the players is is our, our, the coach's first concern, it's Paul's concern, it's my concern, and you know what they're going through is hard, and and especially that. Not be, you know I think we're dealing with it in a way that we're just focused on the the commitment to get better. And that's what our program's based on and the, that player development. And so our job's really the same 
you know, the, 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 the future of, of college basketball in this program and this league and all that, it's all foggy. We all think we know the answer, but you know, that that's, it's just foggy out in front of us. So with that being said, we, we are really trying to focus just on that next step and just on today. And you know what, it's a, it's a great lesson anyways. I mean, that, that stuff out there is just an illusion. <laughs> Anyhow, we don't know what's going to happen no matter what in, in good times. So, but this, this, I think, this COVID stuff has really made us feel that way and, and feel like we're on a slippery slope. And, it, and so my concern has been with the, the mental health of our players and that, you know, being a, be at peace with this moment and be able to get better in this moment and this day. And, and they've done it. My guys have done a great job of, of being able to take advantage of that. Now, that being said, being in Paul's shoes where you couldn't even practice and be with them and, and meet with them and be there to help them. I mean, that's, that's, I, I don't even know how I would deal with that. that that's, that, that's a tough thing to deal with. And, and they're going through a, a hard situation. And, um, you know, I, I, like I said, I don't even know how I, I would right. deal with something like that. Well, let me hit you with the non COVID question. Then the, uh, the other thing that New Mexico has pretty unique is not just a former head coach on their staff. They actually have five head coaches on their staff now four D one and uh, one former junior college head coach. But they just added Dave Filipovich, and you have uh, some familiarity with not just having a head coach on the staff, but uh, a recent Mountain West head coach. Um, when you had Tim right after he left Utah State join your staff, what what exactly does it do to not just have that former head coach on your staff, um, but to have somebody that was in this league? Do do you kind of pick their brain on how they scouted you a little bit, but also how they scouted the rest of the league? Absolutely. I mean, you know. They were these guys were head coaches for a reason. They, they, you know, they've had great careers. They've they've gone through this league, and they're they're smart guys. They, they, what an asset they, you know, Tim's been here, and you know, I know I'm sure Paul's feeling the same way about Dave because you know he's a guy that we both had tons of respect for, and um, you know, he's he just does things the right way. He's got a great head on his shoulders. He understands the league. You know, he's been in it. I think I only got him by a few months, actually, as far as how long we've been head coaches in this league, and he was an assistant before that, so he's probably got way more experience than I have in this league. And so, what a valuable asset! And, and as a as a head coach, you love the you know my I have four head coaches. We have four head coaches on our staff, and um, you know guys that have been in that chair have a different perspective. Not that assistants that haven't been in that chair can't have great perspective and great in, influence and and give you good things, but guys that have been head coaches have a, a, your perspective a little bit more, a little more empathy for what the head coach is going through. And, and I think they can help them through the season and the journey of, of the year, uh, you know, cause they can give, they've been in that seat and that, and that that's worth a lot. Thank you, Jeff. We have time for one final question for coach rise. It'll come from Andrew Nepson from KT VN in Reno. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Andrew. You're on the air. Perhaps unmute yourself. <laughs> well, you're off the hook, Coach Rice. We will leave you with that. Well, doesn't um, Jeff have the follow-up for the follow-up? I didn't we allow no, no, no. That's why we have a mute button. <laughs> no, I appreciate your time. Be well, be safe, and good luck to the Broncos here this season. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. You bet. That's head coach Leon Rice of the Boise State Broncos. We are now anxiously awaiting Derek Alston Jr. Nice. Oh, Diego. Preseason Mountain West Player of the Year. This is a Boise State team that brings back a couple of starters, including Derek Alston, a team that averaged 75.9 points per game a year ago, which is the fourth most in the Mountain West. Derek Alston obviously brings a ton of experience. The ability to score the basketball, he averaged 17.3 points per game uh, last season, and that is the most among returning players in the Mountain West. Boise State, which brings uh, you know a ton of clout to this season, uh, got some preseason votes in the preseason poll as the top team in the Mountain West. Certainly, will uh, be a team that can make a run at San Diego State. Pick second in the league, as you mentioned, Leon Re Leon Rice. Uh, the elder statesman now in the Mountain West. He is the longest tenured coach as the head coach 
in the Mountain West of the Boise mm-hmm. State Broncos. So a ton of experience, an experienced head coach, and Boise State primed to make a run here in the 2020-2021 yeah, season. Without further ado, let's head back to the campus of Boise State and bring in the preseason Mountain West Player of the Year, Derek Alston. Derek, I appreciate your time. Congratulations on being named the best of the best preseason in the Mountain West. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, your reaction. Uh, when did you find out, and what was your reaction when they said, you're the guy? Um, well, I kind of found out when everyone else found out this morning. So uh, it's definitely just a huge honor, like I said, to be able to be recognized like that in such a way. And uh, super thankful for it and just, you know, gets me get too excited for this season. Uh, to get back playing, you know, get playing back playing college basketball and, uh, you know, just excited to get going. If you have a question for Derek Olson, you can go ahead and press the raise your hand button in your queue. We'll get you in queue. Our first question comes from the voice of the Broncos, Bob Beeler. Bob? Hey, Derek, how are you today? I'm good. Good to hear your voice, Bob. It's been a good while. Good to see you, too. So uh, I, I was talking to Coach, ask him the question that Chandler gained so much you know, looking at the NBA, getting feedback on his game. So where do you want to take your game this year? Where do you think you will be most improved or where you will want to work on it heading into this season? Yeah, I think just going through that experience, obviously not having the full experience, but it just gave me a lot more confidence in my game and just kind of where I'm at as a player. And I worked really hard this summer uh, just to be able to improve on things in my game, just being more efficient, being, you know, tightening up my game a lot. I think that just with the team that we have this year, um, it, it's just going to allow me to really just use every facet of my game. So I'm very excited about that. And you guys have a lot of new players that, you know, have been with the team practicing that have been sitting out. What will you learn playing with them in games that maybe you won't know about them from scrimmages? Um, I mean, like I said, I think when you get to the, you know, get to games and get into the bright lights, you know, it's always a little bit different. But um, I think just being able to play with just a lot of high level guys, a lot of high talented guys that can do so many different things. It's going to be a lot of fun just to, put all our skills together and just show our versatility and showcase that, uh, you know, to everyone we play against. Thank you, Bob. Our next question from Rachel Roberts of the Idaho Statesman. Hey there, Derek. Good to see you. So you guys have uh, 10 players on your team this season who have yet to actually wear a Boise State uniform in a game, but you guys got picked second in that Mountain West poll. What do you think warranted that about this team? Um, I think obviously that, you know, the talent speaks for itself with, uh, you know, kind of the, where the guys have come from and their different respective schools. But I think just, um, you know, from even coming off last year, our team was really strong. And I think that with the returners that we have, plus the addition of these new guys, I think that, um, you know, once we get our chemistry and really get, um, get clicking on all cylinders, um, that we're going to be really dangerous. And uh, co- your coach is actually approaching a milestone pretty early in this season. He can get to 200 wins. He, you know, has a chance to pass Bobby Dye with 212 this season. Does it, does it, giving some historic perspective for your coach motivate you guys as well as, as just the opportunity to accomplish some things that you guys haven't before? Yeah, always. I think, especially for myself, just wanting to, you know, leave my legacy here. And so to be able to help Coach Rice reach that milestone, I think definitely will be a huge accomplishment for ourselves. And I think for this team as well, just being able to do different things like that. And, uh, you know, like I said, make, make, this a, make this a historic year for the Broncos. Thank you, Rachel. Next question from Mark Ziegler of the San Diego Union Tribune. Hey, Derek. Um, Coach Rice has said, going back several years that when he got in the league and, and he, he realized San Diego State was kind of the standard bear, um, he tried to, to shape your team in that mold a little bit. And when he was talking about mostly the athleticism and the word you just used, versatility, do you feel like this is, is it finally a roster that, that kind of matches up in those regards to San Diego State? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Just with the athleticism and versus, like I said, the versatility and the length, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, just looking through our lineup and the guys that we have, you know, one, you know, one through ten, just uh, just the length and athleticism that we have this year, I think is going to cause a lot of problems for teams. And as a follow up to that, you know, San Diego State's been been typically the best defensive team in the, in the conference, and and one of their keys is they they switch a lot of screens uh, because they can. Is that something a dimension you guys are going to have? You think this year that maybe you haven't had as much in the past? Yeah, I think so. Just with, you know, like I said, you switch, you can switch one through five with us and uh, it's going to be, it's not going to be much of a drop off defensively. So I think that's going to be a huge weapon for us uh, defensively. And like I said, we, I think this year will be one of our best, best defensive teams we've had here. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Our next question for Derek Olson Jr. comes from John Teetle of Hoops HD. Good afternoon, Derek. Can you hear me? 
Yep, I can hear you. Uh, I believe you uh, declared for the draft in the spring and then withdrew in July. Uh, I was curious either um, what was the biggest factor or factors and any regrets or anything like that? Uh, definitely no regrets. You know, I think for me, just I knew whatever decision that I was going to make during that process, I was going to be uh, done full, wholeheartedly with my heart. And, you know, I just kind of wanted to go through it uh, really just to get a lot of feedback from teams and kind of see where I'm at. And it gave me a lot of confidence just seeing where my game's at from kind of, you know, these past years and how much more I can continue to improve and how much I can showcase this season with the team that we have and kind of the season that we're going to have. So I'm, it was very, it was really set a great opportunity for me uh, to be able to go showcase some things and be able to speak to speak to teams and things like that. But uh, definitely have no regret in my decision. We do have a few more minutes here with Derek Olson Jr. If you have a question, raise your hand to get you in queue. Next up would be BJ Rains of the Idaho Press Tribune. How's it going, Derek? Good. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. You know, Leon was telling us uh, he referenced your play last year where you threw it off the backboard and then laid it in. And he said, uh, you know, now we got five guys doing that in practice. Uh, just kind of talking about the increase in athleticism and stuff. What, what's it like? I mean, are there more alley-oops getting thrown? I mean, what, what, what differences are there with some of the guys that you, that you have in the mix now? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's definitely just, I think, made practice a lot more competitive and, and a lot more fun as well, too, to be able to play with guys with, of that athleticism. It's just a lot of fun, uh, especially when we get on in transition, being able to run the floor and, you know, having two, two athletic wings on, you know, the left and right of you. So it's definitely just been a lot of fun in practice just to, you know, see those guys and, you know, see how athletic they are and how skilled they are. So it's definitely been a lot of fun. I know Rachel is asking Leon about the three-point shooting and losing Justinian and where you guys make that up this year. And he said that, you know, he thinks you're going to take a big step forward in your three-point shooting uh, this year. How do, how do you feel about the three-point shooting? And, and who else on the team do you think is going to be able to, to light it up from out there this year? Yeah, I think uh, we have a lot of guys that can stretch the floor and shoot. But I think, you know, personally for myself, that was a big thing that I worked on was just trying to be more efficient with my shots. And I think my percentage will be a lot better this year just because I won't have to take as many, you know, tough shots or kind of deep threes like I did kind of in years pre and years prior. So I think that I'll just be a lot more efficient based on my shot selection and just the reps that I've been, been able to put in this summer. Thank you, BJ, for the questions. And thank you to Derek Alston Jr. for your time here today. Congratulations once again on being named the preseason Mountain West Player of the Year. We look forward to seeing the Broncos out on the court and seeing you as well uh, take the court here in the 2020-21 season. Appreciate it. Yep, thank you guys for having me.